Well, yes, I mean, there hadn't been a more thorough survey of Aragon for 20 years since uh, about 2002. And that's one reason. The other reason is that so many of the earlier writings and um, exhibitions and surveys of his work stressed the influence of Mexican and Mayan heritage. And while all of that is very well and very important, established a a uh, important scholarly ground for his work. Um, living in Seattle, I knew that there was another story to be told, and that was his uh, student days at the University of Washington and his, the influence of the faculty and the teachers there, namely modern art. So I chose that, the paintings in the exhibition to reflect that, a combination of the figurative mythic imagery and the more abstract um, aspects uh, that he picked up from his teachers. It turned out there were five general categories of subject matter that we ended up highlighting or uh, showing. They are the, the abstract paintings, as I mentioned, also the tributes to Frida Kahlo, heroes of Mexican history, and uh, landscapes and animals. Oh, also, I forgot the sixth, uh, the Madonnas. So in each case, we had very highly selected examples of, the, of those categories so that when people are walking through the exhibition, they can kind of curate it themselves. They can read the labels if they want, which are both in Spanish and English, but they can also, it's a, it's a self-explanatory exhibition depending upon which area of the museum they're standing in and looking at the paintings. Well, the title of the exhibition, Aragine, Painter from the New World, um, it might sound strange because after all, we are in the New World here. How could he come from elsewhere to here? But the point being uh, that in 2015, he went to Europe and brought the paintings there from the New World uh, to Spain, in the country of his own origin and also of his Basque heritage. So part of the imaginary curatorial point of the exhibition was to recreate the atmosphere of how the Europeans, specifically the Spanish, received this work from the New World, what was different about it uh, a number of aspects, of course, that the that the press and the media in Spain commented on. First of all, um, the significance of jungles and the e ecology of Mesoamerica. That was the area that the Spanish first colonized. So they had a, they have an interest in that. Then, perhaps more importantly, was kind of surprising in a way, the portraits of uh, leaders of the. Uh, Mexican Revolution, and also uh, political and social activist portraits like Cesar Chavez. Uh, why was this important to the Spanish? Well, they, unlike the Mexicans or the Americans, they had lived uh, under a fascist dictatorship with Francisco Franco until his death in 1975. And so Alfredo Aragin was stressing uh, the, you might say, longer term or freer uh, political and social values of the new world. Uh, so it wasn't just bringing his art, it was bringing the political values of freedom and freedom of expression back to the old country, back to Spain, which of course now is a democracy in spite of the attempted coup after the death of, of Franco. So it was a big hit. Um, it was a huge success. The attendance, the, there, there, there is no, there is no painter like Aragon uh, in Spain, and they were able to uh, embrace him at, in the form of a homecoming with many honors and um, appreciation. <laughs>